Hello, Sam. Thanks. Guess where we are. Some of you already know what this is all about, which is really exciting. Some of you don't. Like the title says, today I am doing my FX makeup in a haunted prison. Yes, those exist. Oh my god, the ghosts are so loud here. I'm already scared. We are in cell block number eight of Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My hometown. And this one is an extra special episode of the Halloween series because this place, this video, is what inspired me to do the whole Halloween series. For those of you who don't know, my very first special effects makeup job I ever had was right here because they have a haunted attraction at Eastern State Penitentiary called Terror Behind the Walls. It's very good, it's very fancy, I'm not biased. You should totally check it out. Ruby Morrow gave me my first job ever because she believed in me and I lied a little bit and said that I knew what Skin Illustrator was when I didn't, but that's besides the point. We're here today. I'm back at my old stomping grounds because I thought it'd be a really nice full circle to come back here in a way that I've never been here before, which is... Oh, wait! Other fun fact! I kind of became Mikey here because... No one called me Mikey until I got this job. Because when I got this job, as some of you already know, I have a different name. My first name is not Mikey. My first name is Lauren. Please don't start calling me that. But when I got hired here, there were five other Laurens. So she said to me when she hired me, the good news is you got the job. The bad news is you're gonna have to pick another name. And I always liked the nickname Mikey from my middle name, Michael, but no one ever called me that. So I was like, uh, Mikey, I guess. And then suddenly I had like 50 brand new friends that all only knew me as Mikey. And it was the best thing ever. And I started to associate the name Mikey with special effects makeup. So when I started my channel and the YouTube thing, I had to go by Mikey. And now many more people know me as Mikey than as Lauren, which is cool. Anyway, this is not spooky at all yet, sorry. But check this out. This looks like I'm in front of a green screen, right? Like this doesn't even look real, but it is. Watch, I'll show you. I'm just, I'm just in a cell block. I'm just in a cell block that happens to be really old, like a hundred in math. They built this in 1822. It opened in 1829, October 25th to be exact, which is pretty spooky, I'd say, right in time for Halloween in 1829. Did they celebrate Halloween in 1829? Probably. Translation, this place is old AF. Considering, I, f I feel like it's holding up pretty well. Probably lead paint all over this place. Asbestos, maybe? I don't know. But it is sheltering us right now, and it is home to apparently a lot of ghosts, which I like. I'll get a little bit more into the history and the spookiness of this place as we go along. But for starters, I just wanted to introduce the look that we're doing today. As you've probably gathered, every look that we've done so far for the Halloween series is taking inspiration from the location that we're at. At the Roosevelt, we did Marilyn Monroe, zombie style, because the ghost of Marilyn Monroe is said to be there. Queen Mary, we did a zombie Ursula, because duh, the ocean, ships, you get it. In Jerome, the ghost town, we did a desert kind of look, because we were in the desert. And today, I am clearly in my inmate outfit. So I am recreating an infected look that I did very early on, probably my first year here, perhaps my second, but my first year here, I think. It was a look that I did frequently, but that I changed each time a little bit. But this look is different because one, it's fast. Two, it's budget friendly. Three, it's easier. Like it's just the skill set is lower. It doesn't involve a ton of prosthetics. It doesn't involve a ton of blending. And these are a lot of products that you will recognize from a lot of my early videos, but in a way that we haven't actually used it yet. A lot of my channel, a lot of the FX on my channel is built around out of kit stuff. And that's because early on that was what I used. I didn't use a lot of prosthetics. I didn't do a lot of full face applications. I used building blocks that I could put together and then turn into something. So we'll be using some familiar things because I know that I've been doing a lot of big looks through this Halloween series and I wanted to make sure that you guys had at least a couple of easier budget friendly options. So this is going to be along the lines of the Jerome ghost town look in the sense that it is for those who are here to recreate the things and not just here to watch the things. But you can watch too. Like if you don't do the things, you can still watch the things, you know? Cause we're gonna find ghosts tonight. We're gonna find ghosts tonight. I'm determined. Sorry, Ange, it's happening. Let's do it. Wig snatched. Halfway. Oh gosh, it's just on so good. Wig snatched. Yes, yes, scary hair, yes. Halfway there. <laughs> Yo, I'm Prison Mikey. If you get that reference, I love you. Glam, let's get gore. We'll talk some history. Ah, I gotta protect my lashes though. Goodbye lashes. I suddenly feel so naked. That's all it takes. The worst thing about prison was the Dementors. 
Wait, things need to get scary. I'm gonna tell ghost stories like the narrator from World's Scariest Places. Come closer. We're here today in Eastern State Penitentiary where there's ghosts, maybe. I never got caught, neither. You, my friend, would be the Bella the Ball. The Bella the Ball, that's right. <laughs> I love Steve Carell so much. <laughs> I can't get scared if I'm thinking about The Office. We gotta stop. The bell of the ball. You, my friend, would be the bell of the ball. Should I leave pristine eyebrows? Is that spooky? Not really. It's October 3rd. In case you or Lindsay Lohan were wondering, I mean, you're not seeing this on October 3rd, but just know that the day that I'm filming this is Mean Girls Day, which makes it kind of special too. What do I want to do first? I'll mess up my eyebrows at the end. I'd like to leave them for now because they make me feel happy. A ghost. Did you hear that? See, that's the tricky thing because we know that there's people here right now. People are like leaving work. They're doing auditions for Terror Behind the Walls. So we're gonna hear noises. We're gonna assume that they are living humans. But what if the ghosts are having a field day in cell block nine because they know that we're not onto them right now. We're not suspicious of ghost activity. We assume they're humans. What if those have all been ghosts so far? What if that's what they want us in there? Yeah. Honestly, you might have just heard a million ghost sounds and you're chilling, you know? Because it's all about perspective. If you just think that they're humans, you're fine. Okay, so today we are using stuff that all the OG zombies have seen many times before, which is liquid latex and ground coffee. I fell in love with liquid latex and ground coffee right here at Eastern State Pen because we used it for a lot of things. Burns, just woundy textures, like a road rash kind of burn. But one thing that we used it for that I've never mentioned is I used to use it to do infection type looks. It's basically like the burn that I did very early on in my channel, but it's painted differently. All you need, like I said, is liquid latex and ground coffee. You can add other things like lentils or cereal or rice, anything that's like small and shapely, but we're just using coffee today to keep it really simple. Please let me know if you see a ghost over my shoulder. Viewers at home, also you too. Okay. Thank you. Cause I'ma be run, run. You'll know. <laughs> If you run, I'll know. If you run that way, I'm running this way immediately yeah. to go find the ghost. Oh, the other thing that I'm gonna do is for the most part, I'm gonna try to keep all of the painting to one grease paint wheel, which is this one. Take a look, see. Will it autofocus on this? I don't know. You get the gist though. You see the colors. We got green, we got yellow, we got a blue, we got a purple, we got a red, we got a tan. My nails are filthy from the video I filmed yesterday. Anyway, it's spooky. Yeah. I'm going to use the green in this on a little brush and I'm gonna map out roughly where I want my infectious spores to go. I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna use reference pictures too from times I had done this at Terror Behind the Walls. Cause that's fun. There's like a smell about this place that makes me hella nostalgic. I'm enjoying it. It's taking me back. Also look, I'm on the wall here. Be exciting. I'm gonna put some spores. I hate that word, spores. Like some, a lot of women don't like the word, can you guess? Moist. She knows they don't like the word moist. I'm fine with moist. Moist. I don't like the word spores. Everything about that is just unnecessary. Luckily I have a lot of real estate up here. So I'm just gonna draw a little, little thing there. You can't really see what I'm doing, but are any of you really watching my face? No, you're watching that behind me. I know y'all. I should act more scary. I'm scared. <gasps> Can't entertain the people with scary stuff if I'm not scared, right? Something on the nose. I guess I can have it coming up my neck. Yeah, let's do that. All right, we're going a little bit bigger than originally planned because I can't help myself, but it's all still really simple. So you can make it as simple and small or as extravagant as you so choose. I think everyone's gone now, right? So from now on, if we hear anything, it's a ghost. You excited, Ange? No. Why not? It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> Your face. Don't be scared. So now I'm just taking a little bit of latex, a makeup wedge, makeup wedge, a sponge wedge, makeup sponge wedge. Do we have a name for this yet? What are these? We're taking a, a sponge triangle and I'm going to put it in the areas that I have cordoned off. Is that a word? Suddenly I don't know anything about anything. I think the ghost is making me stupid. Can ghosts do that? They probably can. Ghosts can do anything, I, I would imagine, except for show themselves. Sorry, I am gonna summon them tonight while you're here. Come at me, bros. Get it? Like ghosts, but bro, bros. It doesn't roll off the tongue great, but you feel me? And then I'm taking ground coffee, which smells lovely, and I'm going to sprinkle it all over my face. Well, specifically where we put latex. Gonna try also not to make a mess, but no promises there. 
clean up in cell block eight because Ange picked cell block eight. It was just focused behind me. I'm just saying, it's starting. It might be because I'm off center or it's because there's a ghost. One of the two. The night vision will catch it. Oh yeah, we have a night vision camera going on the side. That'll be extra spooky when we get into the other cell blocks though. We picked a cell block that is well lit because I want you to be able to see behind me and, and how deep the cell block goes. But there's a lot of other really creepy cell blocks here that I want to show you before we leave today. Don't worry, you'll get the tour. Prison Mike has me talking in a New York accent now. Wow. You better, watch yourself. you better watch yourself. I'm gonna lock you in a cell block by yourself. <laughs> Solitary confinement. Jersey trash. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start here with those three. Once you do that, you take more latex and then you completely cover the ground coffee. You're making like a sandwich on your face. The bread is the latex, the coffee is the ham, or the turkey, or the tofurkey, whatever you do. I need to be less weird. I'm supposed to make this spooky. This is probably the scariest place I'm visiting the entire series, and yet I'm hype because I'm comfortable here because I worked here. I've walked these cell blocks by myself in the dark, and nothing ever happened. Come at me. Yeah, I feel real tough here. Insert shots of me at Jerome to just bring me down a peg. I was a wuss there, an absolute wuss. Now I'm waiting a little bit of time, perhaps like two to three minutes for this to start drying. And when it's kind of dry, I'm gonna start picking holes in the latex so that it kind of looks like it's open and festering and disgusting, which is the exact same thing that we do for burns. It's all about the paint job. Paint job is different, placement's a little bit different, and you get a whole different look. It's fun. That's a ghost. That is a ghost opening that creaky door. That creak was coming from there. That creak was coming from there? Yeah. I heard it from that way. The girls say that it it's that way. You're saying it's that way. Mm -hmm. I think you guys are wrong. Teacher's <laughs> Yes, and you tell him. You're gonna be a ghost. You are gonna be a ghost. You know what has to happen first for you to be a ghost? I'm a hardened criminal. Prison yeah. Mikey, nice to meet you. I haven't been caught neither. I haven't been caught neither. All right, now I'm just taking the end of my palette knife. You can use anything though, like a toothpick, a fork, the end of your brush. <laughs> There's a lot of more basic things to use before you get out fork. Uh, and you just start peeling away. Yeah, get in there. Can you see what I'm doing? Probably not, I'll zoom in for you, don't worry. Repeat that anywhere else you've marked off for the infection. I'm gonna go a little ham down here. Talk soon. Oh, that smell. Oh God, I'm gonna regret this so hard, aren't I? Oh well, no matter. Let's just put a lot of latex in the baby hair area of my face. That is truly spooky. Honestly, I'm just trying to hide a pimple that sprouted up last night. Has one pimple, makes latex beard. I kinda wish you were kidding, but I know you're not. Listen, my skin has been clear for months. I do one, one chin prosthetic, you'll see. And I get a huge pimple the day before another big shoot? I don't think so, I'm covering that thing. I don't care. God, I'm gonna regret this so much. It's focused on the back, back there. Oh, it was, it's not anymore. <laughs> Going for it. <gasps> I made a mess. <laughs> Sorry. We can deal with that later. And covers the beard. Oh, I gotta poke a hole in this guy first. You don't wanna wait until it gets too solid. Otherwise, it's not as good for poking holes in. Trust me. Excuse me, I'm over here. Rude. I regret this already. So much. It's so much. But I feel like because it's so simple, I have a hard time just doing a simpler look. I'm getting infected from the body up, you know? Marilyn was getting infected from the blonde brain down. I'm infected from her up. That's just how it goes sometimes. You definitely look like you're a part of the building. <laughs> that's true. Look like the paint chips. I guess I should use some of the coffee that's on the desk, huh? Don't need to be wasteful. I <laughs> just I think I just inhaled a coffee. It's nice too because if your latex smells bad, coffee grounds kind of balance it out because it flushes the nose and things. You know how you're supposed to like smell perfume and then smell ground coffee and then smell a perfume? A ghost. Ow, baby hairs already. No. <laughs> I'm never taking this off. I'm just gonna wait until it slowly peels off so I don't have to go through the pain of ripping it off. Not that I would ever do that. I remember staying late sometimes and helping the actors take off their makeup properly. 
It was fun. And I used to not understand actors would sit in my chair and they'd talk about how raw their face is from makeup and how they don't want latex. And I'd get frustrated as a makeup artist thinking like, my job is to put latex on you pretty much. Like your skin can't be that raw. And then I became a YouTuber where I put makeup on myself and latex on myself. And now I get it. And now I feel bad. Yeah, that feels like death. I hate that. I do look like I'm part of the building. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> okay, now we wait for my infection beard to dry. This ends up looking beardy, we're gonna have to change it. it can't look like a beard, that'll be bad. So as far as painting goes, that's also very simple. I used to just use browns on the inside of our little opening infection-y pustule spores, yellow on the actual coffee area, and then brown on the outside. Like a sandwich again, where the bread is the brown and the tofurkey is the yellow. How did we get here? I'm 95 mostly. Oh, I hate you. I'm already messing this up. There's no brown in this wheel. I don't think I realized that, but brown is crucial. So I can't keep it to one, but I can keep it to two. Fail me, don't. So first I'm just putting brown on the insides of the, we're gonna call them spores. They are now our spores. Brown on the inside of the spores. Craters. Face craters, sure. Eastern State Pen has seen some shit while it's been open. There's a lot of cool aspects about the penitentiary. The first being that it was the first penitentiary where the focus was not just to house a bunch of criminals all together, it was to actually reform them, make them better, make sure that they go through penance, hence penitentiary. However, as humans tend to do, things did not stay great. All the time. There are reports of one person in particular who kind of ran a slew of very questionable punishments for the criminals. There's reports of a device, like a gag device, that would tear an inmate's tongue while their hands were strapped behind them. Inmates were reportedly dunked in cold water and then strewn up on a wall to dry in the winter months of the year. There was a chair that would cut off the circulation of the inmates' limbs and reportedly there were some amputations that arose. So you know, not the best things. The inmates had some good things going for them. Early on, when this place first opened, it had running water before the White House did, which is pretty impressive. That's probably where the fun ends, though, because there are some horror stories associated with how inmates were treated. Unless you're Al Capone, he was living the high life. Check out his cell compared to a normal cell. Al Capone's cell is actually one, two, three, four doors away from me right now. Fun. What's happening here? I just ripped open the whole neck apparently. I don't remember doing that, but here we are. So obviously there's a lot of reports of ghosts in this place. There are reports of a guard being seen in the guard tower where I believe no one is allowed to go anymore. I heard that directly from a friend when I worked here. So now that all of our innards are brown, I'm gonna paint the meat part of our sandwich yellow. <laughs> I gotta stop with that comparison, but it's the only one I know. I think I'm hungry. I'm probably just hungry. Going for yellow, and we're putting that on top of the coffee. So like in a burn, you would paint this part red. Instead, I paint it with yellow, and it ends up looking green because the latex mixed with the brown coffee mixed with the yellow just kinda makes this green and gross. A ghost. Are you scared yet, Ange? No. Yeah, you seem pretty tough. Uh, so obviously a lot of ghost stories come out of this place. I haven't experienced anything personally when I worked here. I did walk through cell blocks by myself in the dark, but I did get to talk to some friends at the beginning of this shoot who have worked here a very long time and have either heard some shit or experienced some shit. Fang, come tell me a story. Okay. You're gonna have to, I guess, just stand like a ghost because I only got one chair. So. <laughs> Let's see if it's Don't stand in the corner, like, come over here. I used to do makeup on Fang, kind of religiously, yeah. every single day that you were. Tell me Body ghost stories. Numbers. What have so, you seen? What have you heard? So it's more so what I've heard. There was uh, over in cell block 12, one of the managers had somebody come up to him, one of his workers. Uh, she was in what we call a drop scare. So she, you know, she's looking out through a very narrow little spot 
at people coming towards her for her cue to when to jump out. But she came up to him, obviously shaken, mm. and said that she was looking out through her little scare window and she saw customers walking towards her, but there was somebody behind them and they were dressed in a, like a prison uniform, but not like one of our costume ones. They were dressed in like an old timey looking one. And she said that they were like walking behind them kind of menacing, but also like mockingly, like, ooh, it's so scary. Like walking with hands up and like this really weird look. She looked away, she's, you know, kind of like shook her head, cleared her head, I guess. And she looked back and it looked at her and disappeared. So she was super shook. She went home. He was, she was, she was all, so apparently his stepfather had also gone through or somebody from his family. I might be getting some of the details wrong. It's been a long time. Somebody from his family came through that night and he met up with them afterwards. And he was like, so what you think? He was like, oh, it's great. But as I was going through your attraction, there's one part where you've got like a cell in the middle and you've got an actor in there, but there was somebody in there with him. And he was wearing this like old prison uniform. They didn't match all the, any of the other prison uniforms. And he was behind your actor and he had like his hands up and like he was kind of like <laughs> mock scaring him. And you know, I was like, what the heck's going on here? And I looked at him and he looked at me and he disappeared. So two different people who could not have like planned their stories, an actor and a family member, experienced the same thing on the same night. That's odd. And you've seen some shit. Yes. Tell me your story. Yeah, Do you cell remember? Block nine. Cell block nine? Yeah. That's that one. That we didn't shoot in. That, that, that you didn't pick. I gave her the choice between cell block eight and nine, and she chose eight. Because I couldn't pick. I wanted nine, because right. it's my lucky number, but she chose eight, so we went with eight. Is nine the one where, where a thing happened to you? Yeah, I would imagine. Nine's the we one. We might have to walk go. down. Oh, we'll walk down. She might have to walk down. <laughs> it was a uh, dark, stormy night. <sighs> Not really. It was probably in the beginning of October, a night like tonight, and I was a uh, zombie guard. Anyway, it would take about 10 to 15 minutes to do the scene where the prisoner escapes. We run out into the crowd, we grab him, then we shove him down a hallway, much like this. The lights were out, and um, all of my actors ran away, and we use radios here in order to communicate. And I had left my radio in one of the cell blocks and I bent down to get my radio in the cell block and something pulled me in and pushed me out by my jacket. Like in a cell like in a cell like, like in that. Like in a cell like that. Okay. So I left my radio down on the floor where all that debris is. Uh -huh. Much like that. And I would pick up my radio and usually be okay. But this one evening, I picked up my radio. Something yanked me in and then pushed me out. It was an energy, I believe. Oh, boy. I didn't see anything. In nine. We should have filmed in nine. We're going in nine later, you and I. You are. No, no, <laughs> we are. Down. It's going to be fun. Per. That's hilarious that you oh didn't God. pick that one. Given the choice no. of the two, you didn't know it was that one. You were uh -uh. like, let's not do nine. Let's do I eight. Know. And I'm like, mm, I want to do nine. I let her pick because since I knew she had a story, I figured she would pick the one with the higher ghost activity, if there is any. Yeah. But maybe she just helped us avoid it. Thank you. I'm sorry. If nothing happens in this tutorial, it's Angie's fault. It's my fault. I'm sorry. 100%. Also, I think one of the scariest things I've ever seen on Ghost Hunters came out of Eastern State Penitentiary. Because I'm like a very evidence-based person, despite getting easily creeped out by small noises, yes I know. But there is a shot from here, from Ghost Hunters, where it looks like something runs towards the camera and immediately darts back away from it. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. It's really strange. It's one of the most compelling visuals for the supernatural that I've ever seen. Still don't fully subscribe to the idea that that's what we're looking at, but it's very unsettling for sure. It just got very quiet. I will say that I've walked through some cell blocks in the past that were significantly colder than other cell blocks, and that's supposedly a sign of the supernatural or that one is draftier than another. I don't know. I'm such a party pooper. Like imagine me showing up to like a haunted party and I'm the one that's like, mm, it's just drafty in this one. Well, actually. Well, actually a draft does run south, southeast. I'm just saying like I'm taunting ghosts. I've gone to all these haunted locations and I'm taunting them and they have not given me anything back. Is it that I can't demand ghosts or is it that they don't exist? I don't know. Okay. So now we got our green, we got our brown, and then I think the, the trick that really makes this look much better is to pull more brown away from our spores. So for this part, I'm just taking a brush or a sponge or whatever you really have, dipping it in brown grease paint, laying it along the outside of our spore and pulling out. And as I pull out, I'm pulling my brush slightly away from my face so that the pressure on the brush lessens. I feel like this is a really simple extra step that makes it look extra gross. 
So like obviously this is not accurate to any actual infection you'd probably ever see, but it's a nice theatrical rendition of something gross. Not all FX makeup has to come from something real or realistic. Sometimes you just want to look gross for no reason. Kind of look like a mossy tree though. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Yeah, that, I'm totally not going for a mossy tree. Yeah, I mean, I want to look moldy in like a spore sense, but not in like a moldy tree sense. This yellow has made it like extra green, so I think I might try to put a different color on top to counterbalance. That's a ghost. 100% confirmed ghost sighting. Sometimes I would run white cream paint like I am now over the top because it makes it look a little more like moldy, which is disgusting. I have a thing against mold. I mean, I know that humans instinctively have a thing against mold, but like I really have a thing against mold. I thought that was a scream, but it was a toilet. A ghost. That damn cliche creaky door. There's been a lot of cliche creaky doors in the places we've been filming. It's like they plan it. Old places are just creepy. That's sufficiently pretty gross. Another thing that I would do for infectious type looks, or really any look that I did at Terror Behind the Walls, is I would use red cream paint on a brush and I would put it around the eye area. Just a really easy way to be disturbing. To look sickly or creepy. Red specifically in the waterline is very unsettling. So I also used to do a lot of theatrical type accents when I worked here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of brown to kind of emphasize bags under my eyes, wrinkles in my forehead. Even this chair is cliche creepy. It's all creaks. Oh yeah, looking tired already. Now's the time to mess up an eyebrow, right? That was an odd sound. Oh, please go explore. Be my guest. Ange's getting brave over here. Go Ange. Oh, you're both leaving me? Well, welcome back to Earth. How was your experience? The cells are just a little creepier the closer we get to the door. Yeah, I'm impressed. You went pretty far. Pus, I keep forgetting the best part. Uh, I was looking for a, a pus pun to make because I'm applying pus to my face. And Ange said it best when she said, I can't pus out now. I gotta go ghost hunting as soon as this look is done into the dark cells that are creepier because they are so very pitch black. I feel like I'm icing a cake, a spory cake. This pus is not very stringy and it's bumming me out. I was looking forward to stringy pus. Did you see that? Oops. Oh, that's too much. Kind of reminds me of honey mustard. Suddenly I'd like some chicken fingers that don't cost $20. Yes, I'm still on that. I wonder if I'll ever not be on that. Pus is like the scab blood of infectious looks. You can't do without it. Yeah, cool. All right, now if you'll excuse me, I need to add some teeth, some contacts, and a prison Mikey hat. Do you feel safer with the flashlight? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Casually going down to the hole. Fun. This is so creepy. My head is on the ceiling right now. <laughs> I'm ducking. So just darkness all the time. So
So it's basically sensory deprivation 24 7. That's right. <laughs> See, this is the hallway that all the ghost hunters that you is see it? the guard that oh, really? bounces back and forth in the shadow. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, so is it move forward? You do the opposite if you do it. It's a bird. It's a bird. <laughs> do you know how scary it is? For that to happen, and you can't I see. I can't see. I just heard, and I. This is the first look I've ever done where I truly can't see the final product. I won't see the finished look until I'm fully out of this and I have these contacts out of my eyes, but it straight up looks like I'm in a cloud right now. And I was saying to them that the funny part is that they might be traumatized soon because they're gonna see a ghost and I won't see anything because I can barely, nope, I can't see my hand right now. That's amazing. I can't see my hand. It's not as bad in dark, but in front of a bright light like I am right now to film, I can't see anything. I can see the tip of this finger right now. None of the others. The best finger. The best finger, yeah. It reminds me of the Blue Lagoon in Iceland where like you can't see your hand a foot under the water. But that's my whole world right now. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much because I don't wanna crack this by my mouth. But this is the final look. This is Eastern State Penitentiary. This is the most beautiful full circle of my life, I think. And the grossest as well. And yeah, I think that there are like points in my life that explain a lot about me and why I'm such a creep. Being born on November 1st, being the very first to start off the creep factor. Like I was trying to enter the world on Halloween and my mother made me wait. So sorry, mom, but you got more than you bargained for with that one. The Exorcist at age 11 being one of them. And I think having my first really serious makeup job doing the kind of makeup I really wanted to do, which was FX here at one of the most haunted places in the world. My, my life has led me to being the creep that I am today. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here and lurking, please hit subscribe. Like this video if you've ever done something illegal. I'm looking at you, Jay Walkers. Like this video if I can't see, which means you should all be liking this video. And hit the notification bell, even though you're not gonna see any, just like I wouldn't see any ghosts if I met any right now. I'm gonna ghost bust out of this place. Thanks for watching. See you next week when I can see again. Bye. Okay, I'm just gonna take a stab in the dark here. It wasn't that. Yeah.